Let's move over to another worrying story. The country is experiencing high stages of power cuts. Electricity Minister Jose Ansura Mukhopa says the system continues to be under severe strain. This year alone, we've seen the worst rolling blackouts than ever before. This week, the struggling utility saying its new and revised national standards document proposes the implementation of power cuts up to stage 16. For more on this, let's bring in Warwick Pierce, who's an energy expert and principal researcher at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Um, Warwick, I'm wondering if you even have electricity because half of the country is sitting in darkness at this point. Um, but maybe just tell us what your research, I mean, it's laughable actually. Uh, maybe just tell us what your research at this point has found in terms of power cuts for this year alone. It seems to be the worst we've ever experienced. Yeah, good evening. So we, we know that last year was uh, our worst year for load shedding. It was around about four and a half times that of 2021. So 2022 was a new record for South Africa. But unfortunately, uh, by the first week of May, uh, so this month, we already uh, equaled the, the total of 2022. So we are uh, exceeding the amount of load shedding from last year already um, only in the fifth month. Mm, very worrying uh, just to think that this year alone, and we're only in the fifth month of the year, um, we have passed that. It's said to get worse, though, because the electricity minister yesterday in his update briefing indicating that uh, stage six is inevitable, which obviously means that uh, South Africans are in for a really rough ride, especially for the winter month ahead. Yeah, so we're also seeing an increase, not just in terms of the, the load shedding, but the stages. So for instance, uh, last year was the first year that stage four was, was more than stage two. Um, and this year we're seeing the second most of the stages uh, in terms of, of load shedding is, is actually stage six. So South Africans are becoming quite used to moving between stage four and stage six. Mm. Maybe just tell us what else you have found uh, in your research in terms of the rolling blackouts that we have been experiencing. Uh, I know that you've uh, indicated that this year, especially the month of May, has um, surpassed any record that we've seen in terms of load chilling. But what else are you picking up? I mean, we've been jumping between stages, I would say, three to six. Uh, but in the last week or so, we've been seeing stage six uh, being the most dominant stage that we have been subjected to. Yeah, so I think the, the question is no longer when, when is load shedding or if load shedding is going to end anytime soon. I think the question now is, is load shedding going to stop at stage six? So I think the system operator and, and ESCOM is, is, is doing a, a good job of trying to keep us at stage six or lower. Um, how much longer that will last is we'll have to see. Um, but what, what's coming with, and again, this, the, the information we're using or basing this, uh, the analysis on is, is ESCOM's own data, hourly data. Um, and clearly what's, what is evident is that uh, generation from coal power stations is down. Uh, we've seen that compared to last year. We saw nuclear is down, so obviously Kuburg units um, being offline is, is, is not helping. Um, the, and the other thing that's, that's, that's concerning is, and but obviously doing it for, for the right reasons, is that the peakers, so our diesel peakers are being operated more this year than ever before. Uh, which reduces load shedding, but it increases the, the cost of electricity. So, um, and the, the metric that's often referred to, the energy availability factor, again, reducing. So last year we saw an average of sort of 58.1% uh, 58 um, for the for 2022. Um, this year up to date sort of from the sort of the first or so month of May, so not the last week or so, that's looking at under 53%. So we're just seeing a declining trend there on the energy availability factor. So um, not really much <clears throat> in terms of good news of things turning around we haven't had any new utility scale renewable energy plants uh, online in 2023 so um, we are where we are and, and hopefully things will turn around uh, I was hoping you would give us some good news, but <laughs> the energy uh, availability factor is a big one. Um, Warwick, and I'm wondering if in your research you've been able to pick up uh, what a concern this is, especially because we've heard the electricity minister speak about the fact that because Kusile, for example, only has one unit operating, it's basically giving us between 800, not even 1,000 megawatts of power, uh, when it should be giving us over 3,000 megawatts of power, which could eliminate at least one or two stages of load shedding that obviously plays a big role in terms of the stages that we are experiencing 
Yes, I mean, we are, South Africa is an electricity crisis, so any megawatt that's online or any megawatt hour that's generated uh, assists. Uh, the issue with the coal power stations is the uh, essentially the functionality, the, the reliability. Um, and the, the trend around energy availability factor, there's the sort of two metrics that, or two um, uh, items that, that you have in terms of outages. You have the planned outages, which has been roughly around about 10% for, for quite a few years. It's had a slight increase this year, so sort of from 10 to 11%. Um, but the, the, the concern is the shift in unplanned outages, which is, is your breakdowns. So the problem with breakdowns is you don't know when they're going to happen. And that's been, you know, increased to sort of say around, so roughly around about 10%, similar to planned outages. Um, and that's now increased to over 30%. So, you know, even the highest of the years thus far, the energy availability factor, the highest it's been is, is 60%. So, you know, there's never been more than 60% of, of uh, power plants being available at a point in time. Uh, so that's 40% unavailability. You know, if we, if we could have, you know, sort of international standards of sort of 80, 85% energy availability factor, then obviously load shedding would be dramatically reduced. I wonder if we'll ever get to that um, at least 80% um, availability. The fact that we are sitting at 40% unavailability uh, is rather worrying. Just very quickly, um, Warwick, I'm wondering how renewable energy comes into all of this because everyone's saying we've got so much sun. Why can't we get megawatts from this? How is this? Um, is there any possibility that this can help us in reducing at least one stage of load shedding? From your research, have you found if uh, renewable energy can assist us in trying to drop down our levels of load shedding? Yes, I mean it can. It's, it's, and as I just stated, it's, we're in an electricity crisis, so any megawatts that can come online, uh, dispatchable or not, um, so solar PV and, and wind. Uh, would reduce load shedding. That's that's just the, currently where the situation is, and unfortunately, we've had sort of a delay in in bid windows and with the last bid window with the IPP program. Unfortunately, none of the the megawatts of wind. So you know, we had an allocation of 3,200 megawatts, which would make a big difference. Uh, and due to grid uh, congestion uh, in sort of the Cape Province, uh, this wasn't available. So um, unfortunately, you know, if you mentioned about some good news. Energy availability factor is is, is on a, a sort of a downward trend, which is worrying. Um, there's no, uh, you know, immediate megawatts coming online from renewable energy, but that's on the utility scale. I mean, we have the IPP program bid window six, so there's a thousand megawatts of, of solar PV that will come online in probably a year or two. Um, but we're seeing in better generation, the private sector is is saying we. Uh, or, you know, exercising our choice of a liberalized energy market where before you had either an option of ESCOM or the municipality and now you have the option of your own generation. Mm -hmm. So you used to be seeing large factories, um, residential customers putting rooftop PV and uh, that is at least reducing the demand or requirements from the national electricity supply industry. So every megawatt hour that they're using less uh, is a megawatt hour that, you know, is, is, is less with load shedding. Um, unfortunately, the, the, the problem for some customers which don't have that option, which maybe don't have access to finance or credit, um, you know, the question for South Africa is, well, how do we make sure these people or well, these groups don't get left behind? Mm, certainly, it's a very worrying picture, but thank you so much for your insights this evening. We do appreciate it. That is Warwick Pierce, who's an energy expert and principal researcher at the CSIR.